So, you want to learn more about Arco Linux? Well, it is an Arch based Linux distribution. It has several different variants that you can choose from, as well as the ability to choose a number of different desktop environments out of the box. However, let's target the aims of the Arco Linux project first. What is it? As described in this image, you get a cape, you wear the cape, and fly. What does that mean? Well, I don't know, because I just find it goofy. But it's all about learning how to become an expert in Linux. In other words, if we took the get a cape, wear a cape, fly analogy, it would be like learning to make the cape, not just wearing, wearing the cape. Their main tools of, they have created is a tweak tool, which allows you to in, install more additional desktop environments and window managers as well as other software and other configuration, like NeoFetch. You have the Spaces application, which allows you to turn any Arch install into an Arch Linux-based installation. And then you have the Arch Linux Desktop Crasher, which allows you to remove any desktop environments that you or window managers you do not wish to have. Now you can follow them on Telegram or Discord. You have these are the all the various window managers and desktop environments that are available to you. Uh, Arch Linux X XL or Arch Linux L all comes with XFCE for out of the ISO default, and comes with everything pre-installed, Wi-Fi printers and Bluetooth all ready to go. Then you have Arch Linux S, which is small or extra small as I say, which does come with Wi-Fi, printers, Bluetooth setup. Nothing is pre-installed, but you could still choose whatever desktop environment you want. You have Arch Linux D, which doesn't come with anything. And you have to configure networking printers and Bluetooth all on your own. And then Arch Linux B, which is the one I'll be using to demonstrate, comes with uh, only a few pieces of software that goes with the pre-installer, but you still get to choose which uh, desktop environment you choose. So I'll be going that one. Now, which variant do you choose? This is their learning path that they go to teach you how to become an Arch user, because that's, their, that's the whole point of Arch Linux is to teach you how to become an Arch user, which tells you to first install Arch Linux L, don't touch anything, do this, and after you learn a bunch of things, you can try out more desktop environments, Maybe instead switch to Arch Linux B, which you see is a lot more minimal. Then try out more things. They don't recommend you try out a window manager yet. Phase 3, they want you to check out window managers as well as other desktops. Then you can try out more complex things, the mix and match stuff. Then Phase 5 is more about creating your own image file. And Phase 6, you build from scratch using Arch Linux D. Then on phase seven, it's for you to install Arch on your own, as in without using any of Arch Linux's tools. And then phase eight is when it's like, oh, now you can create your own Arch-based distro. We won't be covering most of these phases today, mostly probably more like phase three and four. I have prepared a, a virtual machine for us to demonstrate the uh, install. Let's first look at the Arco Linux tw tweak tool. You can enable things on the auto start. It won't let me uh, modify it because this is a live environment. However, you can choose whatever desktop environment window manager you want from here. You customize grub themes to provide various fixes like when the repo keys break. Does happen, very annoying. And LightDM, which is a login manager. And you have Mirrors, new fetch configuration, Pac-Man, SDM, which is a login manager. And terminals, you have the various terminals that you can install. Terminal Fun is all sorts of things. Like a little cat. How do do this? Oh, it needs to be installed. Okay, never mind. And these are all the different fetch scripts, which that could be its own top video topic. Now themes, they have various themes for each uh, desktop environment. And then you can add users, 
as well as they have ZSH themes. However, these are beyond the scope. Instead, we shall now look into the installer. So we're going to click Advanced Installation this time. And now the installer called Calamares will be brought up. So I want to continue. About these options. The Linux kernel, this is installed by default. This is your bog standard terminal, nothing special. This is the long-term stable kernel that is used for, say, like a server application for Arch Linux. Then the Linux hardened kernel is a primarily security-focused uh, kernel. Then the Zen kernel is a modified, it's very vague documentation, but from what I've heard is it's designed more for desktop users. Then you code. I'm not quite sure what those are for, but you should choose them whether you have an AMD or Intel system. Now it doesn't really matter for this test, so I'll just select the Zen kernel. Now these are your video drivers. Now, if when booting into the ISO, you should have, if you had an NVIDIA graphics card, you should have selected the NVIDIA's drivers. We have Intel if you have Intel, Novo if you have an older NVIDIA graphics card. Then AMD GPU if you have an AMD card, ATI if you have an ATI card, v VESA, not quite sure what those are for, Open Chrome, I'm not sure what those are, but because this is a virtual machine, I shall skip this for now. This is the login manager. I haven't tried these other login managers, but I have used SDDM. But for this one, let's choose LightDM, since we have, I have not tried that one out. So let's continue. Now, desktop. For this, Test. I'm going to choose DWM XFCE and because why not? Let's go with no. Now these are Arch Linux tools, so these are some additional meta packages where you could choose SDDM themes, which the Arch Linux default has themes for it. You also get the various themes. I haven't seen this theme or this. Candy Beauty is. And then let's get the stop, Trasher, Reflector, and Tweak Tool. Communication. Now, this is where you should look through. I don't need anything for this test installation, so no need for any of these at all. Development. These are all your IDs and text advanced text editors. I'm going to call them advanced text editors because they're not just there they edit text but they can do a lot more. There's that. We don't need any of those because we're not developing on this virtual machine. These are office suites. I would recommend using LibreOffice still or LibreOffice Fresh. Only Office is another good office software but we don't need that for this. Fonts. Now, you should install whatever fonts you want. So let's continue. And multimedia. These are for playing back or editing audio, like Audacity, for example. But we don't need any of these. Now, these are your browsers. Now, everyone needs an internet browser these days. In fact, I'd imagine that most people you interact with only use their web browser and nothing else. So, I'm just going to choose Firefox since it doesn't hurt to have a browser installed. And downloaders. Most people just use the downloader baked into their browser, so these aren't very special. Then if you use any cloud software, these are important. And mail, if you need it. I don't need it for the testing purposes. Now, theming. This is where... There's tons of theming customizations. Let's continue. Graphics, these are your 3D modeling, 2D creation, like Inkscape for vectors, Blender for 3D, I believe. Apparently you could edit videos in it. Then you have Darktable, which I recall correctly is for editing photographs, Adobe Lightroom. Then Krita and GIMP are picture creation software. And these are your games. Look, look whatever games you want. We're halfway there. You have terminals. My two favorite terminals are Kitty and Alacrity. Both are GPU accelerated. Kitty can actually display pictures in 
the terminal itself. Choose whatever one you want. This is the default, but for now I'm just going to install Alacrity. Then File Managers. Install this one because it's one of my favorites. Then USB Utilities and Accessibility Software like eSpeak and Orca, which are text-to-speech, TimeShift, and ButterFS. These allow you to have backups, but these are additional tools. Then if you use connect with Android, like WayDroid is a translation layer for Android apps, so you can run Android apps on your Windows install. And this is for iOS. Then you have benchmarking tools, you have application installers and launchers. The one that you find on Mandaro B, Pomac, OctoP is also good. OctoPi, whatever. Yay allows you to install AUR. Same with Paru, PCAR, and SnapDs for snaps. No one uses snaps nowadays, so it's that power management. Then and then backlight is for laptops. You can get them working with monitors. System seventy six power. This is in case using a system seventy six laptop. And then these are tools you use for hardware discovery. Btop is an excellent terminal-based system viewer. One that people tend to install is Htop, which is a colored version of Top. Now utilities. Yeah. Then applications. These are accessories like Cheese is a webcam software. Git, the password managers. I would recommend Bitwarden and KeePass. Privacy Tor browser and Tor. Then because we're in a virtual machine, I'll choose the, this virtual box drivers. This is for developers, so you should probably not touch it unless you're an Arco Linux developer. Now that now the install is just like it was as I showed you. If you're installing this on a machine, make sure to set a separate administrator password. That'll be it. This was Minix. Now have a nice day.